Imagine if one day the sun unleashed a massive burst of energy that could fry all the electronics on Earth, disrupt the power grid, damage the satellites, and endanger the lives of astronauts. Sounds scary, right? Well, it's actually a real phenomenon that happens from time to time, and it's called a solar storm. It is a disturbance in the sun's atmosphere that can send streams of charged particles and electromagnetic radiation towards our planet. These particles and radiation can interact with the Earth's magnetic field and cause geomagnetic storms, which can have various effects on our technology and society. But how often do solar storms happen? How powerful can they be? And how can we prepare for them? These are some of the questions that we will try to answer in this video. Most importantly, I will tell you about a new discovery of a giant solar storm that occurred 14,300 years ago, which was much more powerful than the Carrington event of 1859, the most severe geomagnetic storm ever recorded in history. This discovery has important implications for our understanding of solar activity and its potential impacts on our civilization. So stay tuned and get ready to learn more about this fascinating topic. To answer this question, we need to go back in time to the French Alps, where a group of scientists were studying ancient tree rings. Tree rings are layers of wood that grow every year inside a tree trunk. They can tell us a lot about the climate and environmental conditions of the past, but they can also tell us something about the sun's activity. But how, you might ask? Well, it turns out that tree rings contain traces of carbon-14, a radioactive isotope of carbon that is produced by cosmic rays in the upper atmosphere. Cosmic rays are high energy particles that come from outer space and bombard the Earth constantly. However, when the sun is more active and produces more solar storms, it also produces more solar wind, which is a stream of charged particles that flows from the sun and shields the Earth from some of the cosmic rays. This means that fewer cosmic rays reach the Earth and less carbon-14 is produced in the atmosphere. This also means that less carbon-14 is absorbed by plants and trees through photosynthesis. Therefore, by measuring the amount of carbon-14 in tree rings, we can estimate how active the sun was in different periods of history. This is exactly what the scientists did. They collected samples of tree rings from an ancient pine tree that lived between 12,000 and 14,000 years ago in the French Alps. They measured the radiocarbon levels in each ring and compared them with other records of solar activity from different sources, such as ice cores and sediments. What they found was astonishing. They found a huge spike in radiocarbon levels that indicates a massive solar eruption that occurred around 14,300 years ago. This solar eruption lasted for several hours and was much more intense than any other known solar event in history. It was even stronger than the Carrington event of 1859, which was the most severe geomagnetic storm ever recorded by humans. The Carrington event caused widespread telegraph failures, auroras visible as far as Hawaii and Cuba, and electric shocks to operators. Scientists estimated that the solar storm of 14,300 years ago was at least 10 times more powerful than the Carrington event and could have caused even more damage if it happened today. Now, you might be wondering what would happen if a giant solar storm like the one that occurred 14,300 years ago happened today. Well, let's just say it would not be pretty. A giant solar storm could have devastating consequences for our modern technology and society, which rely heavily on electricity and communication systems. One of the main effects of a giant solar storm would be on the power grid. The geomagnetic storm caused by the solar eruption would induce currents in long conductors such as power lines, transformers, and generators. These currents could overload or damage these components and cause widespread blackouts or even permanent damage to the power grid infrastructure. This could affect millions of people around the world who depend on electricity for their daily needs, such as heating, cooling, lighting, cooking, etc. Another major effect of a giant solar storm would be on communication systems. The solar radiation and particles could interfere with radio signals and satellite transmissions, which are essential for many services such as navigation, telecommunication, 
broadcasting, internet, etc. This could disrupt or disable these services and cause chaos or confusion among people who rely on them for information or communication. A third effect of a giant solar storm would be on space assets. The solar radiation and particles could damage or destroy satellites orbiting the Earth, which are used for various purposes such as weather forecasting, surveillance, scientific research, etc. This could affect the quality and availability of these services and also create more space debris that could pose a threat to other satellites or spacecraft. Moreover, they could endanger the lives of astronauts or space tourists who are in low Earth orbit or beyond, such as on the International Space Station or on the Moon. They could be exposed to high doses of radiation that could cause health problems or even death. So far, we have seen how a giant solar storm could wreak havoc on our technology and society. But is there anything we can do to prevent or mitigate such a disaster? Well, the answer is yes and no. On one hand, we cannot stop the sun from producing solar storms, as they are natural phenomena that are beyond our control. On the other hand, we can do some things to improve our understanding and prediction of solar storms, and to protect ourselves or our assets from their effects. One of the things we can do is to conduct more research and monitoring of solar activity and space weather. Solar activity is the term used to describe the changes in the sun's atmosphere that produce solar storms. Space weather is the term used to describe the conditions in the space environment that are influenced by solar activity. By studying and observing these phenomena, we can learn more about their patterns, causes, and effects. We can also develop models and tools that can help us forecast when and where a solar storm might occur and how severe it might be. This can help us prepare for it and take appropriate actions to reduce its impacts. One example of such a research and monitoring project is NASA's Parker Solar Probe, which was launched in 2018 and is expected to complete its mission in 2025. This probe is designed to fly closer to the sun than any other spacecraft before and collect data on the sun's corona, which is the outer layer of its atmosphere where solar storms originate. Another example is ESA's Lagrange mission, which is planned to be launched in 2027 and will consist of two satellites that will orbit at two different points in space where they can observe the sun and the earth simultaneously. This will provide a unique perspective on the sun-earth system and improve our ability to forecast space weather. Another thing we can do is to take some practical steps or tips that can help us protect ourselves or our assets from solar storms. For example, we can have backup power sources such as generators or batteries that can provide electricity in case of a blackout. We can also have emergency plans or kits that can help us cope with a loss of communication or information services. We can also avoid traveling by air or by sea during a solar storm as these modes of transportation could be affected by navigation or communication failures. We can also avoid being outside or at high altitudes during a solar storm, as these places could expose us to higher levels of radiation. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.